The highest order of angels, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah the prophet describes the, the most powerful angels in heaven. They're called the seraphim. The word seraphim means the burning ones. The seraphim are God's secret service. They are so powerful, they stand around the throne of God. And, and all they do, the Bible says it's in Isaiah chapter 6, it says, and day and night the seraphim say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, uh, God of heaven and earth. And all they do, the seraphim, is they stand around the throne of God and praise God. So it's kind of, just kind of inter an interesting point. Sometimes when Protestants say, hey, Catholics, why do you guys pray the rosary? The rosary is repetitious prayer. God doesn't like repetitious prayer. Really? Then why doesn't he tell the angels, hey, shut up. I've been hearing you guys for a million years. <laughs> Not gonna say something else. No, the Bible says God is pleased. And all the angels do is repeat the same thing. They've been doing it for, I don't know how many years. Millions, I don't know. Thousands, I don't know. It also says in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 that the angels stand around the throne of God and say the same thing over and over. So God loves repetitious prayer when it comes from the heart, when it's heartfelt. It's like, for example, I'll give you an example. I've been married to Anita almost 40 years. If I tell Anita, like, flippantly, I love you, and she knows I just said it like, to, you know, quit bugging me, I love you. She knows that's not true. But when I tell her I love you from the heart, she loves it. Even after being married for 40 years, when I say, man, I, I love you, she's like, oh. <laughs> Why? Because she knows when it comes from the heart versus she knows when I just said it reflexively, like, okay, don't bug me, I love you. And so God loves prayer from the heart. That's why the angels uh, say the, the same prayers forever and ever. Okay, so when God created the angels, God created this masterpiece of an angel called Lucifer. The word Lucifer means light bearer or son of the dawn. God's masterpiece of all the angels that he ever created was a being called Lucifer who was a seraphim, the highest order of angel in heaven, a seraphim. The seraphim are so powerful that Isaiah chapter 6 tells us that each seraphim has six wings. Powerful. Six wings. Not two, not four, six. And day and night they say, and, and, and they're the prince of God, and God is so holy that the Bible says that the seraphim, you know what they have to do in the presence of God? They have to cover their eyes with two wings. Of the six wings, two of them are used to cover their eyes because they're in God's presence and God is too holy to look at. God dwells in an approachable light. And the seraphims are the ones that are closest to God in heaven. Lucifer was a seraphim. In fact, the tradition of the Jews, the rabbis in the Talmud and the Targums, they say that Lucifer was the only seraphim that was ever created with 12 wings. The only angel that God ever created that has 12 wings, which means he's a super seraphim. He's a seraphim on steroids. God showed all the angels his plan for the future. We call this salvation history. God showed all the angels in an assembly what would happen with the human race in stages, in epochs. And so God showed all the angels the creation of Adam and Eve, the first man and first woman on the sixth day of creation. God showed the angels uh, you know, uh, Noah the flood, Abraham the great patriarch, uh, Moses and the great kingdom, uh, and the liberation from, the, from Egypt after 430 years of slavery, the way he used Moses as a great covenant mediator. God showed uh, the angels King David. Uh, he showed them history in stages, and God also showed him what we call as Catholics the incarnation that God would become a man at a given point in time in the womb of a virgin called Mary, Mary of Jerusalem. God would become a man. God would take on a human body and be born in Bethlehem. And all the angels were now called to worship the God-man. When this was shown to the angels, Lucifer said, mm-mm, it ain't happening. Lucifer said, 
in his mind, if God becomes a man, I'm not going to worship the God man. Why? Here's the demonic intellect at work. Because angels know that there's nobody like God. God is supernatural. Say supernatural. <laughs> angels are preternatural. Say preternatural. Pre Humans are natural. Say natural. natural. Watch this. Supernatural God, preternatural angels, natural humans. Lucifer, who was an angel, preternatural power, he says that God who's supernatural humbles himself, empties himself, and becomes a man, becomes merely natural. Lucifer understands angels were of a higher species than humans, were of a superior intellect. We have more power. We have, we're of a higher order of beings. And so Lucifer says, if God becomes a man, I will not serve the God-man, Jesus Christ. The fathers of the church said, he told God, non serviam. In Latin, that means I will not serve. The implications is, if God, if you become a man in the person of Jesus Christ, I will not serve you. And by implication, also that means that I will not honor the woman who gives you a body. Virgin Mary. And so a rebellion occurred in heaven. There was a, an angel of lower rank. We call him Saint Michael. Now, in the nine ranks of angels, the archangels are second, they're the second rung of the ladder. So think about an angel is a one striker, an archangel is a two striker. Okay? You go all the way to the top. The seraphim are nine stripers. The seraphim are the most powerful angels. Michael was an archangel, is an archangel, that's a two striper. Michael stepped out from amongst the assembly, and this was David and Goliath in heaven. Michael being David, Lucifer being Goliath. And Michael told him, You have in, in, inside your parish, you actually have what Michael said, quis eat Deus in Latin. Who is like unto God? Michael tells Lucifer, in other words, quis e Deus, who is like unto God? The implication is, hey, Lucifer, you're big and strong and powerful and intelligent, but you're not God. And we're not going to worship. We're not going to follow you. You're not our leader. God's our leader. And so at that moment, the Bible says, and you can read this, I'm giving you the details, but the big picture is in Revelation chapter 12. It describes all of this. So write Revelation chapter 12 if you want to read this at home tonight or during your break. But because what I'm saying, it gives you an overview, but I'm giving you the details that come from the church fathers and the mind of the Catholic Church. And so a war broke out in heaven. Creation started with a war. The war was in heaven. What happened, the Catholic Church tells us that in that, in that instant, all the angels had to make a decision. No, just like we have to make a decision as, as Catholics every single day. Yeah, paragraph 393 of the Catechism. It says, it is the irrevocable character of their choice and not a defect in the infinite divine mercy of God that makes the angels' sin unforgivable. There is no repentance for the angels after their fall, just as there is no repentance for men after death. So at that moment, God made all the angels. You got to decide who you're going to follow. A third of the angels followed Lucifer. They told God, "Not said, and we're not going to serve you. If you become a man, we're not going to serve you. This guy's our new leader." And so Lucifer, by default, became now the leader of the kingdom of darkness. We call Lucifer today the devil or Satan. Now. Michael, at that moment, two-thirds of the angels also made an irrevocable decision, which means a decision that you can't take back. That's what that means. Michael and two-thirds of the angels made, made an irrevocable decision to follow God forever. So the battle lines were drawn in heaven. Two-thirds of the angels say, we're following God forever. A third of the angels say, we're done. We're following Lucifer. He's our new commander. At that moment, God made Michael the new commander in heaven. Michael has several titles in, in, in Christianity. One of them, he, he's called the general of the armies in heaven or the commander of the armies in heaven. The church gives him a military title. Michael, not by default, 
He became the leader. And God appointed him as the leader of all the angels. The Bible says a war broke out in heaven. And the good angels defeated the bad angels. And the Bible says that the bad angels, the fallen angels, we now call demons. The fallen angels, the Bible says, were thrown here to planet Earth. Guess what? They're here. You don't believe me? Just turn on the news. Yeah. Just turn on the news. You don't believe me? The demons roam the earth. The Bible actually says in 1 John 5, 19, it says this, quote, quote, we are of God, and he's the baptized, those of us that follow Jesus, we are of God, comma, and the whole world is under the power of the devil. The whole world. It doesn't say 90% of the world. It doesn't say 8% of the world, 50%. The Bible says the whole world is under the power of the devil. And so, at this moment, <clears throat> This is, what, this is what we call damnation history. How was it that the devil, the devil being the father, the prince, their master, how is it that he, and, and by the way, and the demons also have a rank structure. They also have a military rank structure. But here's a bit of good news in the midst of this, this, this salvation history story. The good news is that an angel is more powerful than a demon. I'm going to prove it to you. This church teaches you, but I'll prove it to you from the Bible. All of us were given a guardian angel the moment that we were conceived in our mom and our mother's womb. At the moment of conception, the Catholic Church teaches officially at the Fourth Lateran Council that an angel was assigned to you by God at conception. And the angel will journey with you for the rest of your life until... You stand before the presence of Jesus Christ at your particular judgment, then the angel's job is over. You can, you can go like this, wash his hands, and you can go to heaven forever. To prove to you, and by the way, one of the particular jobs of an angel is to protect you from demons. That's one of his specific assignments, and it's in Psalm 91, verse 11 to 14, if you want to read what I'm just saying. Psalm 91, verse 11 to 14. One of the, your guardian angels' specific jobs is to protect you from demons. Psalm 91, verse 11 to 14. To prove to you that your guardian angel is more powerful than a demon, it's simple. Of the nine ranks of angels, St. Michael was a, a two-striker. Okay? Lucifer was what? A nine-striker. The Bible says Michael hit Lucifer's butt. So what? A two-striper, David, beat up a nine-striper, Goliath in heaven. How? I'm going to tell you how. Because the demons, when they disconnected from God, they lost a lot of power. My laptop is running right now. It's not plugged in. It's running off the battery, so it's unplugged. But it would run longer and more efficient if I plugged it in somewhere. The angels, because they're plugged into God, even an inferior angel can defeat a superior demon because they're plugged into God. The demons lost much of their power when they disconnected from God. They're no longer connected to the power socket, which is God the Trinity. And so although they've kept some power because they're fallen angels, they've lost much of their power. This is why... An angel, even an inferior angel, like a two-striper, Michael, can defeat a nine-striper, Lucifer, because Michael is plugged into God, and Lucifer isn't. So that's a bit of good news, amen? amen. So just remember that. This is why it's important in the morning and the evening, start your day with the, with the uh, add that to your prayers, is the garden angel prayer. Angel of God, my garden dear, to whom the love of God commits me here. Be ever this day at my sight to light, to guard, to rule, to guide. Use that prayer in the morning. Use it in the evening. Maybe when you're in the airport, you're somewhere crowded. Just call upon your guardian angel. 